My name is Rajneen Hardman. I am a librarian, a library trustee, a library advocate, um, and I'm active in Wikipedia. And I'm very appreciative of open data, and I will be uh, leading you through this training session today and looking forward to it. Nathan? Hi, my name is Nathan Story. Um, I work for the New York City Department of Homeless Services, um, but I've been involved with uh, Beta NYC for a while now, and I'm just happy to uh, be here to uh, support asking answering questions. In the end, I've put a couple links in the chat. If anybody has questions uh, during the presentation, um, put your questions here and I'll kind of try to group them for the end. But um, Regine has asked that we'll do the questions at the end of the presentation. I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Um, so good morning, everyone. I'm gonna share my screen now and, and begin the presentation. And everyone can see my screen. Great. So welcome to New York City Open Data 101. Um, and I'm, we have over 60 participants. I'm so happy. Um, I'm sure we have a gamut of folks that maybe uh, have tried New York City Open Data or have not. But what we're going to do is we're going to run through some history of open data, what it is. We're going to go to or run through the open data platform and see how to maneuver around that. And then we're also going to talk about some tools um, that use New York City open data. So I am, uh, Nathan and I are part of the Open Data Ambassador Program and I have introduced myself and we're very happy to be here and to share this information with you all. This training session was co-created by the New York City um, Office of Data Analytics, also called MODA, M-O-D-A, and Beta New York City, which um, is a civic technology organization. So the training session here was co-created by them, and we have been trained to train you guys. We are trained the trainer. Just a brief history, um, firstly, about New York City open, open data. We sometimes think of open data as a, a modern term because data is all around us. Um, government is always collecting data. But in fact, um, open data has a, a, a longer history in New York City. And we're going to um, check out some of the milestones of that history beginning um, in the late 19th and early 20th century. Uh, that is when the progressive era reforms um, were pushing to make government more efficient, more accept, ac accessible. And that is the beginning of the city record, which is the official journal of New York City government. This is a uh, snapshot of the first issue, which is came out on June 24, 1873. And the city record is still in print now, but it also um, is online. And we're just gonna peek a little bit at the New York City record online website. I like this website, it's very pretty and it's well laid out. And I also like here in the user's guide, you can um, find all the acronyms of all the uh, city agency names, which I, I like because there are many, many acronyms. So that was late 19th, early 20th century. City Record started, it still exists today, it's in print and it's also online. The next thing, the next uh, milestone that we have uh, jumps to the 1960s, 1970s, when um, the freedom of information legislation was created, we might know it as FOIL, F-O-I-L, or FOIA, Freedom of Information Legisla Legislation. And this was passed at both the federal level and the state levels. So federal government and state governments have their own uh, FOIL. And the idea about FOIL was if a person knew that a particular piece of information or some information was in an agency um, that they needed, they could request that information. And if the agency was able to provide that in a, in a form that was um, easily uh, accessible to the person, they would send it. Um, many times journalists requested freedom of imp information, use freedom of information, um, but oftentimes it was just really the one person that w knew that there was something in the government agency that they wanted to see or they needed to see and they would request that and they would receive it. So it was really like a one person to one person unless the journalist was using it. And that was a revolutionary concept at the time that you could actually request um, information from government agencies. 
We jump ahead now to 1993, um, about 30 years after that, and what happened was um, agencies decided that since um, they that because they already knew what information they had in, in sort of a, a form that could be sent out to folks, what information they had that was accessible to others, they decided to print a directory. So this was a jump from freedom of information um, law because in the FOIL era, you had to know that there was something inside an agency that you needed. You had to request it and then you, you waited for the agency to send back to you. This public data directory in 1993 was a sort of a, catalog, uh, a catalog of what was actually available. So for the first time, folks could look at this um, data directory and see information. They didn't have to know that something was exactly in an agency. They could peruse this information and find out what was available for them. Um, some of these uh, um, ca uh, categories in this data dictionary are still in, in use today as part of the New York City Open Data Platform. Next, um, about 10 years ago in New York City, uh, the actual New York City Open Data Law was signed, and that made public data public by default. So the difference between the New York City Open Data Law and other governments within the United States is some were uh, executive policy, were policies or executive orders, but here in New York City, it became a law. And you didn't need to ask for the, like in FOIL, where you had to request the information, you had to send something, you could just look at these data sets that are public by default, and you could read them on your own. So this was a big, big step, and the reason why we're here today, we have New York City open, uh, the open data platform. This is a street scene of uh, Union Square, 14th Street and Broadway, and it just gives um, an example of uh, different types of data points that are collected. So we see the paved streets, the recycling bin, parking tickets, the, the light, the traffic lights, restaurant inspections, and all of these data points which are all over the city are um, access points of data being collected and then being um, uh, collated and, stru and structured within um, New York City open data. Sorry, I keep hitting the wrong button. So we want to talk a minute now about what makes something New York City open data because not everything can be open data or publicly available. Um, this particular uh, map here is not um, available on open data. This is an early map of Central Park, some trees in Central Park. So the first thing that um, it, that is a criteria for uh, something to become New York City open data or open data is that it has to be machine readable. And by machine readable, it means it has to be structured in a way that a machine can go in and capture that information and uh, interpret it in a way that we can then read it. So mostly structured um, information may be rows and columns, but it doesn't have to be rows and columns. It just has to be readable, machine readable, a computer has to be able to access the information to, uh, to uh, have us interpret it. The second uh, criteria for something becoming New York City open data is that it cannot be private or confidential. Um, of course, we're all worried about privacy now. Privacy is a big thing, but not only for privacy reasons, but also maybe for legal confidential reasons, le reasons information cannot be private or, or confidential. One exception to this, of course, is New York City government employees who are required to list their salaries. And there is, in fact, a data set within the New York City data platform um, that lists the city employee salary da data per fiscal year. But in general, private information and confidential information does not um, exist or does not pass on to New York City open data. And how does this happen? How is this um, watched over and how is this created? Well, it's a collaborative effort between the New York City Department of um, Data Analytics and the New York City Department of Information and Technology and Communication. And also 100 approximately 100 open data coordinators across the city agency's offices and 
Commission. So the New York City, the Open Data Coordinators, there's um, one in each agency um, that works within a team. And what they do is they make sure that the data is identified, structured properly, documented, published. They make sure it's updated, able to be shared. And of course, they scan to make sure there's no personal or confidential information um, that is uh, passing through. So there are over 100 open data coordinators. Um, and as we said, there are oh, more than 3,000 data sets within the data New York City Open Data Platform and over 1 million visitors per year. We're going to now go through um, just an overview, overview of what the New York City Open Data Platform looks like. And we're going to take a look at that. So this is the landing page of New York City Open Data. And it has uh, a few options in the menu bar and a search bar. The search bar is where uh, folks often like to start. And we're going to we're going to use the search bar for a sample search in a little while. There's also a data tab in the menu and that will take you to um, the data that is that will take you to a page that lists uh, sort of some groupings of data. So you can go in through the search bar, but you can also go in through the data tab. And what you'll see here on the data tab are um, you can look at some groupings of data sets by agency, the business, government, education. You can look at data sets by category. You can look at the most popular data sets and you can look, look at the data sets that have been added most recently. So these are different ways that you can explore some of the data sets that are in the platform. We are going to go back and use 311 in our search bar and use 311 as a search term to see how you would um, begin to find data sets in the New York City Open Data Platform. And just before we do that, we just want to take a little um, side trip on what is New York City uh, 311. And New York City 311 is our government resource. It is for assistance and general information, not for emergency situations. 311 is available 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. It is in 175 languages and it covers over 3,600 government services. 311 is available accessible via telephone, web, Skype, Twitter, Facebook, and mobile apps. So now that we know a little bit more about 311 than we might have, um, we have put um, in the earlier slide, we put 311 in our search bar and we hit enter. And what happened was we got 30, excuse me, 43 results. Um, so there are 43 results that carry 311 within the title of the data set. For our purpose, we are going to take the first one, which is 311 service requests from 2010 to the present. When you go into a data set and you, you, the first thing you will come to is your overview page of that data set. So you see at the top, we still have, this is the title of our data set, 311 service requests from 2010 to the present. This is going to be a description of what's in the data set, a general description. We are, um, here, we here at the bottom, it tells you how many rows. And for 311, from 2010 to the present, there are 27 and a half million rows and 41 columns. It will tell you the overview page of a data set will tell you when it was last updated, how frequently it is updated, and not only how many views, in other words, how many times folks have viewed this data set, but also how many times it's been downloaded. And most data sets, not every single one, but most data sets will also have what is known as a data dictionary. And we're going to look at the data dictionary for this particular data set. So what is a data dictionary? What a data dictionary does is it will tell you all the column names that are used. We, I think we had 41 columns in our 311. And it will list those column names and it will give a description for each column name so you know what a unique key is or you know what they're naming it, what the description is, if there are any expected values because sometimes numbers and dates have a particular format that they, are, uh, that they need, and then some notes. So your data dictionary is explaining to you 
what the columns are along um, the top row of your uh, data set. And it's often interesting to go in there and, and see because sometimes people name things and you think it means one thing or it doesn't. So it's always good to go inside your data dictionary when you're exploring a data, um, a data set within the New York City Open Data Platform. So that's the uh, overview of a, um, a data set. Once you find your data set, you click into the title of the data set, you'll come to this overview page, it will give you uh, this various information about how it's been updated, how it's been downloaded, how many rows, etc., and the data dictionary. And once you've um, kind of gotten your idea of what this data set is all about, you can certainly go to the view data button. Once you go to the view data button, what's going to happen is you're going to get your data. And we put this section break in here because if you remember, we had 27 and a half million rows for our New York City um, 311 data set from 2010 to the present. So we're going to see how we can um, make that into a more manageable set of data that we can wrap our, our heads around. So we see we have the 41 columns. You can always um, hit next because there's no room for 41 columns. Same thing with the rows, you can come down. But we do have our 27 million rows, more than that. And that's way too much for us to um, digest at this moment. So we have a filter, a filter tab here on the right side of the screen. So we're inside the data, we're actually viewing the data of the data set now, and we wanna go to the filter tab and look at some different ways that we can filter the information. Let me just go back for a minute. So the one way that we're going to do that is we are going to filter maybe by location. So we're going to pick, let's pick the Queens um, Community Board number one. Once we filter by that, we've brought our 27 million down, it's hard to see, to about 546,000. Still a lot. And so we will continue to uh, apply some filters for 546,000 and we've applied two other filters so we've applied three filters altogether the location the time and the uh, agency so after our filter we have three we have in our set of data here all calls all three one calls made in Queens Community Board number one after January 2022 that were assigned to the Department of Sanitation. And down here at the bottom, you can see that's about 289 rows. So that's 300, less than 300 rows is a lot easier for us to examine and analyze and look at than the 27 and a half million rows that we had ahead of time. So once you have your data in a sort of manageable um, set that you can look at, you have some options. One of your options is definitely you can download your data. You can export your filtered data to your computer and you can export it. You can export it by downloading it um, to either your Excel file or your Google Sheets. Um, and you, most, there's a variety of formulas that you can export. Um, most do, the most popular is CSV, which is comma separated value, um, so that sends it off to Excel or Google Sheets where you can do some manipulation and graphs and charts if you like on your own computer. What you can also do while you are inside the New York City Open Data Platform is you can visualize the data within the platform. So to visualize data um, that, you've, uh, that, you've collect that you've collected and filtered, you would go to the Visualize tab, which is next to the View data tab. So we're back at that overview um, page of our 311 service requests. We did view the data. Now we're looking at how to visualize the data. So we're hitting the visualize data tab. You can configure and then once you're in there you can configure your visualization however you like. Um, this is a pie chart um, and you have certain choices as to what kinds of charts and graphs that you like. This is a particular pie chart. It's also been filtered. It's filtered according to the created date, which on this particular screenshot is 3-21-2021, so about a year ago. And you can set your dimensions of how you want to measure um, and, and um, compare in your uh, visualization. 
So this is a pie chart now of 311 inquiries created on March 21st, 2021, and it's broken down by borough. So this is an example of how you can uh, configure your visualization. You can also configure your visualization uh, through mapping. Um, you can uh, choose to have a map rather than a chart or a graph. You're still able to filter in terms of what information you want on that map. And here we have a map of 311 requests that are submitted in a single day. In this particular example, it's yesterday in relation to when this um, uh, data was, um, data interpretation was infor uh, informed. It wasn't yesterday of today. So it's a screenshot of an example of how you can um, pull a map of requests in New York City open data. Another way is a bar chart. Every, everyone likes a bar chart. It's easy to see the differences in a bar chart. And here we have an example of uh, a visualization where a bar chart was requested. Uh, the Department of Transportation from uh, certain dates in March of 2021, and it's broken down by complaint type. So this is a bar chart of the Department of Transportation, DOT 311 complaints between March 1st and 2nd. 2021 broken down by complaint types and these are all options that you can explore when you are on the New York City open data platform when you have your data set. So we're going to talk a little bit now about tools that use op uh, New York City open data because just like people like to go in and use New York City open data, uh, people also like to create tools that then use um, extract information from New York City open data. Uh, one of the ones that is uh, pretty fun to look at um, is the Open Data Project Gallery, which is a library of data tools that build on New York City Open Data. I'd like to take um, a look at the uh, Open Gallery project. This is the landing page for it. And then you have, um, these are submissions that have been accepted in terms of how they have used New York City Open Data. Um, the squirrel one is nice. This is a census. This is a map of the census of squirrels that was done by volunteers. Um, another one, quickly, would be restaurant violations. We have a, an example later uh, of how we would like to grant um, monies to restaurants, and this might be a good data set that we look at. And another one that is kind of nice is, I mean, they're all good. I think there's a well, you can explore. I thought there was, um, this is an example of visualization of New York High School's college enrollment. I mean, you can pretty much find um, all kinds of different um, interpretations of how people use tools on our project gallery. You can also submit your own project. Um, that's on the gallery page. So if you find that you are designing a tool that uses New York City open data, you're welcome to submit it. Another tool that uses New York City open data is the map gallery. Um, and that is um, a wonderful set of maps that uses um, a wonderful set of tools that uses all different kinds of maps um, of New York City. There's a crime map, a mitigation action map, a vaccine finder. Um, so this is just one more tool that we can use, uh, that we can access that helps. So we've looked at um, a little bit of the history of New York City Open Data. We've looked at um, the platform itself, how to do a search, what an overview page looks like, how to explore the data dictionary. We've looked at how to access the data and actually look at the data and filter the data down to a more manageable spot. We've looked at how to um, export data to our own computers or visualize data inside um, the platform, and then we took a look at a couple of tools that actually use New York City Open Data to recreate even more tools for accessing um, information about New York City, open information. Next, we're going to uh, run through a way to actually answer questions um, in New York City Open Data. And this, these five steps, we're going to go through these five steps for, uh, fairly quickly, but just to understand that when you, you can go into New York City Open Data and explore and have fun and find different things and try out different things, and that's always good to do. Or you might find yourself with a particular 
uh, problem or challenge that you want to solve and you feel that New York City Open Data can do that. Um, so we've put together these five steps and they're kind of like a yellow brick road that if you follow it, you might get the best results out of New York City Open Data. The first thing um, is to define the problem when you're trying to solve, that you're trying to solve and figure out who your stakeholders are. Um, in other words, what is the problem or challenge you need to, to um, examine here and who is it that you have to report to with the results? And that, could, that person could be you. You could be doing this for your own research or you could have um, fellow colleagues or administration that are, are really looking for results from your research. For this particular example, we are going to use the idea that you're a New York City government agency and your team would like to implement a support program. They want to give some small grants and loans to restaurants. And one of the things that you need to help find out is which restaurants should receive the, fun the funding. So here's your problem. You want to determine re restaurants that are um, that are in the best uh, situation to receive your funds. Once you do that, you figured out your problem, the next best step is to familiarize yourself with what data sets on New York City Open Data would help you inform your problem. So uh, for our particular example, we want to know um, what's on New York City Open Data that can help us. So what we might do in the original search bar is search for key terms like business or restaurant and if we do do that this is a uh, tiled screenshot of two different searches where we went in and we searched for business and we went in and we searched for restaurants and what happened after we performed those two searches we have a list of data sets on the right side that uh, potentially could be helpful in our result in our search for restaurants that are worthy or would be good candidates for our grant proposal, for our grant, um, for giving our grants out. So now we've, um, we've defined the problem, we've familiarized ourselves with what, which data sets on the platform might be able to help us, and now we're ready to frame some specific problems, so, so, excuse me, some specific questions that get at the problem. We might ask which restaurants have received a grade A restaurant inspection, which have received city support already as part of the business acceleration, which restaurants are currently employ the largest people, and which restaurants are in the, the highly trafficked areas. So we're, we're getting to specific questions that we now want to ask um, our data sets that we've found inside using our search terms of business and restaurant. This is um, um, this is a shot of understanding, again, going back to the idea of um, each data set having its own data dictionary and the data dictionary explaining what the columns within the data set are about. So this is an example of looking at a business acceleration uh, data set to find out what kind of financial support they provide. And when we actually went inside the data dictionary, we find that what they do provide is in-kind support, but not financial support. So that helps us understand what a, what a business acceleration program will provide as opposed to what our team is trying to provide. When you are working along with these data sets and sometimes um, maybe getting um, not understanding or getting frustrated or, free, or finding that some of these information is not helping you get where you want to go, there's always the option to contact the New York City Open Data Help Desk. And that um, option is always found in the top menu bar under Contact Us. And you can send a note to the New York City Open Data Help Desk. Um, and actually, the more information you give to them about what you're looking for, or what your frustration was, or what your problem was, um, the better they will be able to assist you. And also, if you find in all your search that there's a data set that you think should be there, but it's not, you can certainly suggest the data set be, um, be created to, for the New York City Open Data platform. But we strongly suggest that if you're having any kinds of trouble or any kinds of questions about what's going on in your search, that you do contact the New York City Open Data Help Desk, which can be found on the... Um, top row, the menu of the top row, contact us. 
So we're framing our specific questions now. We're still here. And we want to, because we want to conduct an analysis um, of, of what is actually available um, in terms of our restaurant search. So after finding some of these um, data sets, we framed our specific problem. Uh, we have the New York City restaurant inspection, re inspection results. And we probably would like to give restaurants funding that have a grade A rating. So we're finding which restaurants have a grade A rating. And now we want to conduct a certain analysis. Um, and here's where we want to build our charts or our tables or our um, graphs so that we can begin to crunch the numbers and summarize the results. If we conduct an analysis and we have this um, restaurant inspection results and we get this kind of bar chart, which um, if you can't see, I will let you know that on, along the bottom, the green bar charts, um, the grade A ones are actually the second one. Um, and then it's grade B, and then there's some other grades which can be explained um, in either the data dictionary or by asking uh, the New York City Open Data Help Desk. But the, the real surprise here is the biggest bar chart, the most amount of restaurants have actually no rating. And so we might feel, okay, well, we want to give to restaurants with a grade A rating, but we're not really sure about what's going on with all these restaurants that have no rating whatsoever. And this, again, might be a good time to contact the New York City Open Data Help Desk to find out why are there so many uh, unrated restaurants in our search. And lastly, after we've done, um, we've defined our problem, we know our stakeholders, we've familiarized ourselves with the data sets that are on the platform, we have framed specific questions and conducted an analysis that answers some of our questions and found some solutions to um, our questions. The, we're at the last step where we are informed by these results and we're able to make decisions and provide our stakeholders with recommendations. So again, this is a five-step um, sort of uh, yellow brick road for how to really interrogate um, inf data information within the New York City data uh, platform. It, you don't have to follow it, but it's been found to be a very um, useful kind of stepping stone to pulling data uh, from pu pulling specific data to answer problems from the New York City data bridge. So now we just want to talk a little bit about how to get involved with New York City Open Data. Again, um, again, the New York City Open Data Help Desk is there for you. It's also not only for asking questions, but if you find errors or you would like to report errors or request a data set, um, and if it meets the definition, as we talked about in terms of criteria, in terms of privacy and confidentiality, um, and the agency is able to provide that data, then um, you will start um, a chain of reaction to get a new data set set up if it passes all that criteria. But you're always welcome to send a note. And um, again, the more information that you uh, send to the help desk, the better able they will be able to assist you. And once again, back to the New York City Open Data Project, which we're going to look at now. Um, one, another way to familiarize with um, familiarize yourself with what's being done um, in open data is to look at some of these things that folks have already created and all of these things have been created using New York City open data. We looked at the squirrel map. There is a boundaries map here which tells um, uh, as a tool for viewing the overlapping administrative boundaries in New York City. Sometimes you hit you hit You'll uh, get the overview page for the project, but then you can also launch the project and it will take you to uh, a more in-depth um, experience with the project. And these can be all found at the New York City, here we go, um, the gallery. It's called the Open Data Project Gallery. And it's a, it's a lot of fun to poke around in there. And then, of course, you're part of New York City Open Data Week 2022 right now. Um, that is ongoing. It began yesterday and will continue through the weekend. And there are lots of workshops and seminars and ways to get involved with New York City Open Data. And these are produced by, again, the New York City Mayor's Office 
of data analytics, Moda, and Beta New York City. So we want to uh, let you know that there's plenty more going on this week. And now we're ready for questions. Hi, hi Regine. Uh, there was a few questions that came in on the chat. I wonder if okay. it's okay if I just uh, summarize sure. them. I kind of provided some answers over the chat, but just for other people who maybe aren't paying attention there. Um, and then we have about 10 more minutes um, and I can, I'll keep monitoring the chat if people want to add extra questions in. And then if we have time and people don't want to type questions, we can uh, have people either uh, raise your hand um, if you know how to do that on Zoom mm -hmm. or just um, send a note in the chat that you would like to just say a question. Uh, but the questions we had so far, um, there was one from M. Richardson um, who had a few questions about uh, data uh, changing from one day to the next, like a, maybe a unique identifier um, that you used to be using is no longer available and how particularly a company that's using that could ensure that their data um, uh, wouldn't, get, their, their application wouldn't get broken by data changing. Um, and okay. and uh, so that was one one question. Let me just uh, say all the, the questions okay. here. Um, and then if you want to add a, a kind of notes, I, I also um, had a, a couple of small answers so I can um, uh, mention what I, I answered over the chat if you want. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Monica was asking about um, API um, mm -hmm. parameters. Um, so Zachary had provided her a link for mm -hmm. that. But if anyone yes. else has more detailed questions about API, mm -hmm. I think a couple, Zachary or, or myself might be able to, or, or right. Regine might be able to direct those questions. Mm -hmm. um, the, Zachary will also provide the deck, a link to the deck. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Jamie was asking about a sales uh, pitch kind of uh, for other cities about how to say the benefits of open data. Okay. Um, so I sent a link to um, Mayor's Office of Data Analytics 2021 kind of presentation about uh, the state of open data in New York City. That might be a place to start. Okay. There are others in Beta NYC that I'm sure um, have done sales pitches. Um, so the beta, that might be a good question for Beta NYC Slack channel. Um, I will put the link to that in the, in the chat as well. Um, on on the sales a, pitch yeah. question, I'm happy to talk more there too. We've definitely spoken to other cities and organizations that are trying to promote the use of open data around the country, around the world. So I'm um, always happy to, to share more there. I think briefly, like talking about people like like you all who are interested from from outside of the city, but also talking about city employees and the benefits that having more open data provides for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then I guess... Um, just maybe before we move into these other questions, just on on the on the, the first question about the, the data uh, changing, um, the answer that I provided, which I think is a, a common answer here, is that yes, the first place to go is always the the help desk. Um, and uh, if you weren't getting a response there, try again. Um, right. uh, sometimes that could be hectic, um, uh, but uh, just wanted to add one thing to keep in mind is that the each data set was um, created by an agency for a specific purpose. So mm -hmm. when you're building stuff on top of it, um, you might be building something that wasn't originally intended. Uh, so there are kind of like a lot of nuances to, to that could come up. Um, Regine, do you have any other um, insights about that that you wanted to share? Um, um, no, except I, I I find it hard that a unique ID would change very frequently because that's like one of the most important things in a data set. Um, so, I, and also looking at the frequency of updates, like if it hasn't been updated in six months, then um, that might um, indicate more changes have happened. But whereas if it was updated yesterday or this morning, uh, it's you could be pretty confident that uh, it, it hasn't changed that much. Um, so, but again, I agree. When you're building on top of things, um, you have to make sure that the, what you're building on top of is stable so that you're, what you're building is stable. I agree. And I think API, we had answered, I think in class, there is an API um, tab next to the filter tab uh, for those that do have APIs. Okay. And Okay, so here's another question. Um, is there a wish list of projects the city or other organizations would like to build? 
I like that question. I don't know the answer to that. I, I will um, defer to. So uh, meaning, is there like a place where you can? Well, it, we did have a, an instance where if you thought that there should be a data set, you could contact the open uh, the data help desk. Um, but I, I'm not sure if there's a, a spot where we're beginning to list, oh, it would be great to have this, this, and this. I, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I think that's a really good question for, for Beta NYC there for the Slack channel, because um, there are a lot of people that, that you, as a first step to kind of building an application on top of open data, one thing I like to recommend to people is to talk to other people to see if anybody mm -hmm. has done something similar um, or to see if there's anybody you could collaborate with. Um, and the uh, Beta NYC is a really good um, connector for that. Um, so I'm going to put the a link in here for uh, Beta NYC, um, the community page, and I mm -hmm. recommend the um, the Slack the Slack channel if you're on Slack. Although there's a there's a couple other ways to get in touch with people there, mm -hmm. and people answer questions there. Um, we have another question coming in um, from Rosamund. Um, how how would you go about documenting the proportion of out of state? Uh, like e.g. Texas license plates on cars parked in different neighborhoods. I'm sorry. How would you, in Texas? No, here, here. Oh yeah, not in Texas. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we have a big problem. We have not enough, people complain there's not enough parking, but there are all these plates that are clearly bogus plates, um, you know, and, and I think it may happen more in some neighborhoods than others. And I'd like to have an idea of how, uh, how oh, often? So nobody is uh, actually uh, collecting. We have to go back to collecting the raw data there. Oh, I see. <laughs> you you want? Oh, you would like the proportion of out of state license plates? Yeah. I mean, some of them may be legit, but uh, not so many. Um, I'm not quite sure. I I would have to think about how to build that search um, on the on the yeah, platform. They're... Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I don't know specifically either. Um, uh, but uh, someone in the chat, Bill, um, had mentioned that it might maybe if the cars had gotten tickets and there was a, a data set um, from DOT about tickets that had the license plate number. Mm -hmm. um, if the license plate number indicated what state it was in, um, I think that's a a good question to kind of remember that. Um, New York City open data is about things that New York City has jurisdiction mm -hmm. over, and maybe license plates might be at the state level. I, I don't know in this specific case, it might be very well the case that you could answer that question with New York City open data. Um, but I think that's a really good question that you could search around um, in the open data uh, portal, look for some websites, mm -hmm. maybe starting with tickets to see if you can find Texas license plates. Thank you, it's well, not I mean, just Texas, but I, yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. I think, think uh, another yeah, mm -hmm. another way to do it is to find out if so, if it's on the platform, how many tickets altogether, and then how many tickets are New York based, and then subtract the two, and that would give you an idea of mm -hmm. how yeah. many were not in in New York City plates. Yeah, like Rosamond, are, like are you looking in the chat? Are you looking in the chat, Rosamond? Yes, I um, am. I see the violations. Yeah. Um, so this is I also like Doug. Thank you for. Uh, you know, linking to that, I, I think that's a, a good thing about this community is often like you have a question and somebody else already might know an inkling of it. So mm -hmm. um, uh, thanks, Doug. Um, so that might be a good place to start. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. No more questions. How are folks feeling about um, exploring the platform now? Um, are they feeling a little more confident about how to go into the platform and filter, visualize? Good. Good. Well, Thank oh wait, one question. Responses. I think mm -hmm. we have like we have uh, two minutes. So mm -hmm. if you have a question, Joy, um, I did a sort a data a sort, and when I did the visual, Joy, are you able to? Um, uh, the community board setting disappeared. Uh, Joy, are you able to come uh, to to speak? Uh, it's okay if you can't. Sure. So I, I just did the, a quick sort using my own community board for a set of data of noise complaints. Mm -hmm. Looked good, and on the on the um, on the Excel sheet, you know, on the screen, it looked good. When mm -hmm. I clicked visualize um, and went to that tab, the data then started showing things from Queens and elsewhere that weren't my data set. And I had in the filter 
you know, the filtering categories, the little box checked for community board and everything. And it looked fine before I went to the visualization. When I went to the visualization, that, you know, separating out of one community board disappeared. Did I forget a step? I think when you go to visualize, the filtering begins there again. Am I correct? Yeah. So, so you need to restart the filtering sorry in about that, that yeah. tab. Oh, okay. You don't just jump to visualize. You got to resort the data again because, once you're in there. I see. Yeah, because the data t the data view is just the the data in the rows and columns, and you can filter and play there and export it. But the visualize actually starts the process again uh, in terms of filtering. Am I correct? Yes. Uh, okay. So if I'm wanting a visualization, I should just start there with my sorting. Yeah, maybe that's something that we should um, include in the presentation. Great. Thank you. Very helpful. I learned a lot today. Thank you. Uh, with that, I would like to close off the session by just thanking um, Rajin and Nathan so much mm -hmm. for um, leading this session. And again, congratulations for um, graduating from our Yay. Open Data Ambassadors program. <laughs> Which was great. Great program. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, Thank you, for everyone. joining. Yeah.